Good morning. We are at Walmart. Going in to get a few things because we're going on a field trip. So let's go get stocked up. Snow's got something to scratch on instead of me. <laughs> supposed to be in how many lanes there are <laughs> looks like there's at least four or five but we're we just go. following this dump truck <laughs> up here it's gonna fatten oh, up into six oh, lanes what's going on wait Kurt you're in two lanes why you are for sure in two lanes <laughs> how do you know I'm in two lanes I don't even know I... well you are I promise <laughs> Yeah, see, you were in that lane and this lane. Now we're good. All right. I don't think this is truly intended to be a six-lane road. No, I don't think so either, but they were making it one. All right, guys, welcome to Mexico driving in the cities. <laughs> San Cristobal sits at about 8,000 feet elevation. But if you want to leave town, and I think this is pretty much going in any direction, you got to climb. So we're climbing up into the mountains. We're getting up in the clouds. So we're leaving the city of San Cristobal, going on about an hour and a half to two hour drive through the mountains to a city which is the capital of Chiapas, Tuxla. And then just on the other side of Tuxla is where we're headed today. We are stocked. We're on the road. We just fueled up. What's going on, Kurt? Excited to be in the van again, even though G just took a big poo and smelled up the van. Uh, still, it just feels good to be back in the van. We have an exciting adventure today and uh, tomorrow as well. So super excited to take you guys along with us and see what happens. You guys probably saw that we got stuck in a roadblock coming to uh, San Chris we've been warned that there's potential roadblocks to where we're going today so we're going to be on the lookout yeah and there's a facebook group that we follow that kind of helps us keep track of that and i put a post in there this morning and all the replies are kind of vague as to whether there's going to be a roadblock or not so we're going to go find out now these these in the area where we're going there's a couple different kind of roadblock scenarios and some are just kind of local protests, so they're very safe. It's just a, a political statement. Those are the types that we may encounter today, not the ones that are a little bit more scary. So we'll see. But uh, anyway, let's here we go. go. So guys, this is a bummer. We drove this whole way to go see the Sumadero Canyon, which is a huge canyon comparable to our Grand Canyon back in the United States. And it is closed. Oh, Kurt's up there trying to figure out when. So the sign says, closed for the contagion until further notice. Uh, the parks had been opening up, and we knew this park was open, guys. Look at the kitty. Hi, kitty. So, I don't know what's going on with that. Well, that was disappointing, guys. Um, you know, we've been checking to see what's open and what's not. Quite honestly, the canyons have been advertised as open for a while. Um, but there was a sign up there about the contagion. 
which obviously is the coronavirus. So we don't know if they're having a flare up in Tuxla and they're starting to shut stuff down again. We really don't know. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna have to go see what's going on. So at the canyon here, you can go up and ride around the rim and see a lot of great uh, lookout points and everything. And it's a beautiful canyon. But then also at the bottom, there's, you know, and it's farther away, it's 20 or 30 miles away. Meters. There is a place the where you can get on a boat and ride the river through the canyon. We don't know if that's part of the national park or if it's just something, a tourist type place. We're gonna swing by there and see if that part we're gonna swing by there and see if that part of the canyon is open. If Kurt doesn't launch us into space on these topes. <laughs> We are very bummed about the Canyon National Park being closed. We know it was open, so it being closed is a new thing. And it's not a crowded National Park. You just drive along the rim of the Canyon with five or six different spots to pull over and, and do a lookout over the Canyon. So we gotta get to the bottom of why they closed that and make sure there's not some sort of flare up going on around here. But. Another thing you can do is you can take a boat ride through the canyon. So we have come to a place where you can do that. And Kurt has walked down there to get the scoop to see if that's open and see what's going on. So let's see what we could get figured out. All right, Kurt is coming back. Let's see what he figured out. We can do a private tour now for Trace Mil Pesos. Want to do it? That's what we're here for. Let's do it. Should we park down there? Yeah, we park right over there. All right, we're locking up the van. We've got the gear. We got a boat getting ready. We have decided to spend a little bit of extra money and have a private boat. One, so we can film a little better for you guys. And two, to be extra safe because of the virus. So to do the private boat is costing us 3,000 pesos. But with the virus, it's just what we do, guys. It's what we got to do. Worries just keep growing by the day. Need a moment where the green and blue appear to spin a rock and watch the ricochet to the river, to the river we go, leave our worries on the shore and drift away on the river. Ready, Kurt? Yeah, let's do this, all right? I don't know why the park was closed, but the boats are open. This is good. Yes. All right, guys, we are going up in the canyon in a boat. We're going to show you this thing somehow today. As I grow older, well, that boat I'll never sell. It works better than the pills that die. With that old fishing pole, I still catch them by the bucket full. The kids are helping on the grill and sneak a taste. 
The perfect words are never said. You could change your mind when you're intertwined with the water and the waves. The Cave of Colors gets its name from the pretty colors that form naturally along the wall due to the filtration of the magnesium and potassium. The cave is also home to the Virgin of Guadalupe, which is usually surrounded by flowers and burning candles left by visitors. We also found out that this could be a prime fishing spot too, as our captain showed us with his cast net. He was pretty happy that we booked a private tour because this gave him the extra five minutes he needed to catch enough fish to feed his family for a few days. Right there, look, there's a crocodile. a monkey. He's a pretty good bit away, but Kurt has the big lens out. We're gonna see if we can get him for you guys. I'd say he's 150 feet up into the trees, and you gotta remember we're in a moving boat with no tripod. Kurt's trying. You see him still, Kurt? I see him. We found monkeys! Are there babies? It's a whole family. Oh, how exciting. Oh, they're climbing up. You see them? Oh, there's the tiny babies. You getting them, Curdy? Guys, this is far away, so we'll see what we can do with this footage. You're going to see it whether it's bumpy or not. Oh, look at them. There's a whole bunch of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Mucho. Oh, look at them going up the side. Of the oh, there's some way up top, too. Well, there's a whole trail coming behind them, so just stay there. Oh, here comes more. Here comes more. Oh, look at them. All right, guys. It was a long shot that we would get to see monkeys. There they are. Adios, Chingles.
The national park borders Tuxtla Gutierrez. I'm sure I said that wrong, and we just call it Tuxtla, the state's largest city, which has unfortunately caused problems with pollution and trash. Lots and lots of trash. Although there are several local efforts underway that remove more than 5,000 tons of solid waste from the river each year, they still struggle to keep up, especially during times of heavy rain, when all of that trash and debris is washed down to the river. Illegal logging upriver, runoff from the farms along the banks, and the wastewater that runs down from the local municipalities all add to this problem, which park officials blame on the lack of environmental awareness of the people that live in this area. Even with the trash and pollution, it is a beautiful place to visit, and the cleanup efforts continue to improve every year. And the more visitors they get, the more money they can allocate to helping clean up the river. On the river we know Sometimes the perfect words are never said I spill my coffee, I don't feel like talking my Worries just keep growing by the day I need a moment where the green and blue appear To spin a rock and watch the ricochet The Sumadero Canyon is a deep and natural canyon located just north of the city of Chiapas de Corzo in the state of Chiapas in southern Mexico. The canyon's creation started with a little crack in the Earth's crust about 35 million years ago. That's about the same time that the Grand Canyon back in the USA got its start too. The Grijalva River runs through the canyon and has a current that actually flows north, starting down in Guatemala and eventually dumping into the Gulf at the Mexican state of Tabasco. It has vertical walls as high as 3,300 feet. It's a narrow canyon that's about eight miles long. It's surrounded by the Sumadero Canyon National Park, a federally protected area of over 53,000 acres. It's the second most important tourist site in Chiapas, drawing in over 300,000 visitors a year. The river is also home to several endangered or threatened species, such as the American river turtle and the American crocodile. The jungle along the river's banks are home to monkeys, mini birds, and even some ocelots. Sometimes the perfect words are never said You could change your mind When you're intertwined with the water and the waves Alright guys, we are done with the boat ride We are turning in our life vest And we're gonna head to the van See if we got those monkeys on video or not. Right, Kurt? Yeah. I'm pretty sure you guys can see this. It's fog. Guess who's driving? Rain, and it's fog, sleet, it's always me. <laughs> Snow. Wind, it's me. Ah, look at this fog, guys. Not real safe conditions. And we just had to climb a mountain, so there's a numer numerous semis going about five miles an hour because they can't make the climb. And uh, Snow's doing a good job, but we got no visibility. Wish us luck. You're probably used to this by now, but this morning things absolutely did not go as planned and not unusual. But what I gotta tell you is overall, the trip was amazing. The views were stunning. I hope you guys enjoy as much as we did. But I gotta tell you, man, it was a really nice day. The first thing Snow said, she kinda looked at me all googly-eyed and said, I feel better already. I like the water, guys. Any kind the of water. water, yeah. She had a good time. So anyway, we hope you guys enjoy this. We actually got out early enough where we're headed back to San Chris tonight. Fortunately, we're not, we didn't get up to the rim. We don't know when that's going to be open. 
but we have some more excursions that we're gonna do and I gotta tell you this one was fun so stay tuned